What's going on guys? My name is Hussein and today is a little bit of a different video. Uh, it has to do with the tech, but it, communication when it comes to the tech world and, and software engineering world. And basically this is the verbal communication in the form of the English language. And uh, as you might, some of you might know, uh, my first language is not English. My first language is Arabic. I've been speaking Arabic since I was basically learned to speak and we learned English in school when I was like 10 or nine years old, but we don't speak it at home, right? We don't use that language in your own country. You don't use the English language. Like when you go to places, you always everywhere, right? We have watched shows translated in Arabic. We have studied curriculums, math in Arabic. Everything is in Arabic. So this is up until the university where the, the where I was like, what? 1819, where we started to study English text. And even that, most university uh, tutors actually sometimes talk in Arabic as well. So the English language, my English language was was terrible. And I think it's still, still terrible, in my opinion. I'm going to explain more about why that is. Uh, despite some of you think that my English is good compared to like a, a natively uh, native Arab speaker, right? But uh, I want to discuss that a little bit, and I want to actually uh, change your mind because the English language in the tech world is completely different in the social world, and I, I'm finding I'm finding still a lot of uh, uh, challenges, let's say, in in conversing when in, in a social interaction, and I'm gonna give you examples. How about we jump into it, guys? So, uh, some as as I discussed ma and many times in this channel, maybe once, I guess. Uh, I immigrated to the United States in 2015, specifically October, uh, when I got a job in Israel here. Uh, and ever since, before that, all the jobs I got, my colleagues were predominantly were Arab speaking. So I would. I, I had no incentive to talk in English, right? So some companies I joined actually had more uh, like a, a non-Arabic speakers, like a Indian, so we speak in English. But other than that, most of the time I would speak Arabic. At work, I speak Arabic. At, 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 uh, at home, obviously. And even when we go to restaurants, we speak just broken, barely broken English just to get the point across. That's, oh, I'll have uh, one Big Mac chicken, whatever, right? Whatever, get the point across to get to get you to do whatever. But we didn't really care about uh, having a full thought to actually craft a good message, right? That's not true because, not true for all uh the whole Gulf or, or the Arab war, because it depends where did you study first, right? I studied in the government, so my curriculum was Arabic. Everything was Arabic, so we we learned math in Arabic. We learned pretty much everything in Arabic when we were young, up until the university, where we started to get introduced in, into English text. Like, so the math all of a sudden is different. Now we have to use X, Y instead of C and Thod, right? So that's that's the difference. But it didn't, it didn't matter much because we still know the concept. So I was, I bridged the gap real quick, but still the, the basic concepts of English were, I don't think it was there because I didn't, I didn't practice the language until I, 2015, when I had to come to the United States and I'm forced to speak English every single day. I have to go to work or I go to Starbucks. There's no way you can say, uh, it's like, oh, one, just one cup, uh, put espresso. You cannot just say, just few words and get away with it. So you try to you, you try to put some more work on your language to to actually get the point across. So otherwise, they're gonna say, "What are you What are you talking about?" Like example, I'm gonna give you an example when I come to uh, to specifically. This is an American thing. This is not. Uh, this is not. Uh, this is not everywhere. So we when we studied English back in Bahrain, my own country, and pretty much anywhere in the Gulf, they teach us British English. And British English, there is a little bit of a nuance and stuff, right? So we 
we always overpronounce letters like water, refrigerator, strawberries, right? Computer, anything that has to do with T. This is just one example, right? But in America, when he goes like, uh, can I have a cup of water, please? I, I actually overpronounce every single letter. And for some reason, this is confusing for American, right? And especially with my thick accent, uh, I would say, can I have a cup of water, please? And uh, they would say, what? So, excuse me, sorry, can you say that again? Uh, water. Nope, water. Wa and when you say war, all good. So that's just one example of, of just conversing, changing your accent a little bit just to, to fit with the, with, with the social norms, right? But that's just one example, right? When it comes to that, so I'm, I'm, I'm forced to speaking English, obviously. And, and now slightly with time, it becomes slightly better, right? So in, uh, when we're watching movies, right, we, we yeah, obviously watch movie in English, but I'll always... 99% of the time, we cannot watch, watch. that was before I, I came to this day, I watch movies, I watch any TV show, I have to have a subtitles, Arabic subtitle, not just English, at least English subtitle, but preferably Arabic subtitle, otherwise I cannot watch the thing, that, that was like in 2014, 2013, up until that, I, I can't, I can't, because I, I don't understand what they say, or they speak too fast, now, what, with the English being used all the time, it's it's gotten slightly better. Okay, I, I now I understand. I just understand it. So it's just a matter of practice, right? So now, if I go to work every day, I go to Starbucks. I, I ask for that, and I still struggle sometimes if if the order is complicated, right? Uh, I still use stuff that is not relevant here. Right, and I'm gonna give you an example. Like, if I'm gonna order a meal in McDonald's, we used to have this 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 thing. Uh, it's called upsize, which is which is the large portion. I don't know. When when you say here, give me an upsize uh, meal. What, what the hell does that mean? Right. So this is an example where it doesn't really translate well. Things like uh, it's just uh, things that you have just to forget. Right. So as as my English goes. Uh, it just goes slightly better, and I just converse with more people, getting more social. And here's the thing: we don't, I don't really interact socially in normal English all the time, except when I go to a restaurant. I don't, I don't have like uh, we we just started having uh, like English, uh, I mean American friends very recently, so this is a little bit getting slightly better. But as as and my colleague dealing with my colleagues. Every day, it got really simple, really easy, because guess what? I talk in tech all day long, and this is not hard for me at all. So I can explain a problem uh, when it comes. I know the terminology of the computer. I know software. I know all this stuff. So I can converse with my colleagues very smoothly when it comes to the tech side of the English part. Right, this is very easy. It's become, it's become almost like very simple, right? And I got better at as choosing the right words to to convey the message as short as possible without winding it down. Obviously, it took me five years, and I'm still getting better at it. But this didn't come up without feedback from my colleagues at work, right? Because they were saying, "Okay, they're saying," and and I actually tell them, "Please correct me if I'm." If I said anything like uh, doesn't make sense, or if I, there's a w better way of saying things, please tell me. And and most of the time when I speak, I used to not anymore. I used to first say it in my head in Arabic and then translate it in English. Bad idea, because most of the time it's gonna be intertwined and, and in very long winded. Because there's a, always a better way of saying what you want to say in, in, in English in a very concise manner versus in Arabic, this might be the concise way of saying this, and I'm going to give you an example now, but the moment you translate it, it doesn't make any sense. I'm going to give you an example of the, the social English that happened to me. Like, and this is where, where uh, 
I have to use the Arabic. I, I say it in Arabic and then I translate it because I don't, ha I don't know how to say it otherwise. In the tech war, when I talk with my colleagues, I don't have this problem anymore. I always say the things I want in English first. That's only happening when, when, uh, when I talk at work, right? Or when I talk about, I don't know, CPUs and CPUs memory, and then I want to talk about how expensive a function is. I, 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 I always speak in English first. However, I still struggle in social English. Can I give you an example? My battery, my car battery died, I think uh, a week ago. And I went to the garage and I wanted to explain to him what happened. He said, he told me what happened. I was like, okay, my battery died. Even the word died is weird in Arabic. We, we don't really say died. So I, I, I told him, oh, my battery stopped working. Why? Because this is exactly what you're going to say in Arabic. <laughs> and, and when you say to us, like, my battery is stopped, or he will understand you or she will understand you. But it's going to take a little bit longer. It, it's just so weird. How, and I don't know how to bridge this gap without just, just practicing, I guess. Because this is just, this is just, this is the, just a different, completely different language, right? So I want to actually explain to him, and this is the funny part, I want to explain to him exactly what happened. So... So I started doing that. So what would I say in Arabic? All right, so I'm going to actually say it in Arabic. I'm going to translate it. This is exactly what I'm going to say. And I'm going to translate exactly what I mean. So uh, all of a sudden, I went to bed and I woke up the next day and the car is not working. This is exactly literal translation from Arabic to English. In in in. In Arabic, it makes perfect sense, and people will immediately understand it. Oh, okay. That means, oh, so it, w it used to work before, and you you went, and, and the next day it didn't work. So, so all the information you need is in that sentence. However, it does not, it makes zero sense in English for some reason, right? So that's, that's one example. It's just so odd. So yeah, it's just weird. It's, trying to speak that and I still getting uh, getting better at the two what is the equivalent of my uh, my my car stop because the battery is is no longer doesn't have enough juice right so how do you say that so okay it's, it's actually my battery died and you, you can actually safely say that battery died in in in, uh, in Arabic uh, you cannot say that I mean are you some I mean, you might say that, but it just doesn't make sense to me. It's just fascinating. So, yes, the short answer is yes. I'm still struggling in English. Not much in the tech world, but in social speak. And and with my American new friends, I have this problem today, right? Because because uh, we want like it's like oh, what do you have? What have you done? What did you do last weekend? All right, and let me think. We went to a coffee shop and uh, we drove to San Diego to 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 try out some new coffee. So this is exactly what I say, right? And and even that I still try to say it first in English, but still having trouble finding the word. If I try to speak first in English, I have trouble finding the words because you try to construct the sentence in English and and for native speakers this comes up very quick, right? In Arabic I can immediately say what I want to say. I mean, you can argue that it depends on what what dialect the person you're conversing to with uh, in Arabic. That might actually differ because to a Bahraini speaking Arabic is different from an Egyptian, for example. They, they are a little bit different dialect from a Lebanese. So, so I sometimes I I, I don't, I'm the only one who does that. Not not, not everybody does that. But I, I change my dialect based on who whoever converse with because I know a little bit of a different dialect and, and that's just a different that's something in me. I just I just change my dialect sometimes to fit that. But if I if I don't know the target dialect, I will use my original dialect, which is the Bahraini one, which not everyone in the Arab world will truly understand every single word, right? Of it. It's just different. It's a Khaliji kind of a dialect. So that 
that's as essentially just wanted to give you some little bit of background of my struggle with the English language and question back to you too uh, as a as a non viewer non non English speaking do you struggle with these uh, kind of, uh, of of learning English what exactly do you struggle uh, with is it writing uh, my writing is awful by the way <laughs> right but uh, uh, yeah so is it writing is it speaking is it is it something else do you struggle in the in the in the, you're with your English in the in the normal uh, with your colleague in the, your job or do you struggle in English in general with the social side because to me this these are two different things and and I think I'm I'm better at one over the other and I'm starting to work a little bit uh, getting myself a little bit to get better at both so all right guys that's it for me today sorry for the long video but I just want to talk about that and, and kind of uh, explain to you guys that I'm, I'm, my English is not perfect or, or good yet <laughs> to be honest all right guys thank you so much for listening uh, subscribe for more software engineering stuff I know this video is different but I talk about back in engineering in specific in the software engineering and security and stuff like that so if you want to learn more about this stuff check out the content in the channel i'm going to see you in the next one you guys stay awesome goodbye